Lots of academic writing requires you to use tables, and this is easy to do in Markdown, especially if you know a few tips and tricks. Hi everyone! In this video, I'm going to give you all the tools you need to put together tables in Markdown. I'm going to start with showing you how to do basic tables that will work for pretty much any flavor of Markdown, and then we'll look at more advanced tables that you use when working with Pandoc. And then I'll end by showing you how to use a program called TableFlip uh, that makes the whole table making process a lot easier. Now before we start, you might want to go to the TableFlip website and download the app. This is just one app or resource that you can use to put together tables. There are lots of other ones out there. This one I particularly like, but if you feel like using a different app, you know, go right ahead. <laughs> the important thing is that you put your tables together quickly and cleanly, and that everything about your writing is easy and effortless. So with all of that in mind, let's get started. I want to start with showing you how to design basic tables in Markdown. But before I do that, I just want to make a quick point. You'll remember in previous videos that I said that there are several different flavors of Markdown, that is, slight variations in the syntax. Now some of these flavors, in fact the original Markdown, don't support tables, but there are lots of flavors that do. Some of the most common are GitHub flavored Markdown, or GFM, Multi Markdown, or MMD, and of course Pandoc Markdown, which I'll be showing you how to use here. When it comes to basic tables though, any flavor of Markdown that supports tables will support these kinds of tables. So you should be able to apply this pretty much anywhere. Now let's say that I want to make a table, and I want that table to have three columns. So the first thing I'll do is I'll start with the headers for each of those columns. And you can see that that's what I have here, column 1, column 2, and column 3. Now to separate these headers into distinct columns, what I need to do is separate them with pipes or vertical lines. Next I need to add a line of characters to show Markdown that this will be a table, and also to express the alignment of each column. And that's what you see here. It's a series of pipes, colons, and dashes. You can see that we have three dashes in each column, and each of those series of dashes is surrounded by colons. Now if I have a colon on either side, I'm telling Markdown that I want the alignment for those columns to be centered. But if I want the text in my table to be aligned left, then I just put the column on the left side of the dashes. And if I want it aligned right, you guessed it. For now though, let's just keep it centered. And then for each subsequent row, I add the text to each cell, and I separate those cells, again, with pipes. And you can see that I have this written out very neatly, but in fact, if the spacing wasn't uniform, if it looked like this, it wouldn't be an issue. It would still render as a table. So now that we have the syntax for putting together a basic table, let's see how it looks in an actual text file. You can see that I have two programs open. On the left side, or the black screen, that's a text editing program called Sublime Text. On the right side of the screen, that is the white window, that's marked too, and that'll give us a live preview of how our text file would look when it's rendered into HTML. The first thing I'm going to do is add a title to this document, and then some placeholder text below it, and then finally the table we were looking at in the previous example. And let's see how this would look in HTML. Like I said before, because I have colons on both sides of the dashes, that means that the information in the table is aligned center but I can just as easily align it on the left by only having a colon on the left side of those dashes. Let's watch the preview. And if I want it aligned right, I just put the colon on the right side. Watch the preview again. And that's pretty much all there is to basic tables. Now when it comes to using Pandoc flavored markdown, you have some other options for how you format your tables. Let's look at those. First let me delete this table, and let me show you some examples that I've taken from the documentation on the Pandoc website. In this first example, you can see that a few things are different. First of all, there are no pipes separating the columns. Second, there are no colons telling Markdown whether the cells are aligned left, center, or right. Instead, that's communicated in the way that the numbers are aligned to the dashes associated with that column. Finally, below the table, you can see that I've added a caption. And this is something that you can do in Pandoc. You simply need to write table, then colon, and space, and then the caption for the table. And in fact, it can go above or below the table. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, looks good. So that's the first example. Let's move on to the next one. In this example, you can see that I've removed the headers, and I've added dashes to the bottom of the table. And if we render this in HTML, you can see that you get a table without headers. So this is one place where Pandoc has a definite advantage over the more basic tables we looked at before. You can create tables that don't have headers. 
Another great thing about Pandoc's syntax for tables is that you can have headers and rows that span multiple lines of text. This is very useful if you, for example, want to include a bullet point list or a numbered list within the cell of a table. And as you can see, it renders perfectly in HTML. The final way you can do tables in Pandoc is with a grid type syntax. That is, you're using dashes, equal signs, pipes, and plus symbols. Again, this is useful if you want to have multiple lines of text in a single row. So let me show you how that looks. And you can see that when I use this type of syntax, I can have a bulleted list within a single cell in my table. So that's it for more advanced tables. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward. However, I'm guessing that you might have said to yourself while you were watching this, yeah, this is straightforward and easy to grasp, but it's still kind of a pain because I have to add all these dashes and these pipes and these colons. And if I change some of the text in the cell, that messes up the alignment and then I have to redo it. And actually, I totally agree with you. And there is an easier way to deal with tables. And that's with a program called Table Flip. In order to show you Table Flip, the first thing that I'm going to do is go back to the basic table that I showed you at the beginning of this presentation. So here's the basic table on the left and the rendering on the right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to close the preview on the right. And I'm going to take the file that I've been working on, tables.txt, and I'm going to drag it onto the icon for table flip. And you can see that what table flip does is it gives us a more traditional view of the table that we can work with, something that's similar to Excel or Google Sheets. And that makes it a lot easier to, for example, add a new row. All I need to do is click here. And as soon as I save the document, you'll see that the text file is also updated. Likewise, if I want to add a new column, Table Flip makes that very easy. All I need to do is click on this button here. And then I hit Save. Now you can see that there's a little issue, because in the fourth column I added, the letters are aligned left instead of aligned center, like in the rest of the document. But again, I can easily change that with Table Flip. I just go back to the program, and I actually need to click on the More Options here, and then I would click on Center. And you can see that in the preview, column 4 is now centered, and if I save it, the change is made in the original text file. Finally, another great feature of Table Flip is that if you add more text to your individual cells, the program will make sure that all of the pipes are properly aligned. So what would that look like? And you can see here in the text file that everything continues to be nice and neat. And so even if it can be a bit of a pain to write a table by hand, programs like Table Flip can make that process a lot easier. And so you have all the advantages of writing in plain text, but with the same speed that you might have working in a rich text editor. So thanks for watching this video on tables. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you're notified about new videos. Leave your questions and comments below. You can follow me on Twitter at Dr. Nervis. And then check out my other videos. Here are a few selections to get you started. Thanks again.